Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this is gonna be the start of a series of videos where we work through all of the private pilot certificate written exam questions that deal with like a cross country navigation and different kind of wind correction angle problems and ground speed problems and everything that you're gonna have to really pull out one of those charts and a plotter and try to figure out, you know, like what the course is and stuff. These are the, in my opinion, the hardest and by far the most time consuming questions uh, that you'll see on the private pilot certificates written exam. Uh, so solving them all on the front end and knowing the answers before you walk in is definitely the best way to go. So with that, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so this first question that we're gonna cover today comes from the cross country planning section. So it says, refer to figure 20 and determine the magnetic course from first flight airport area five to Hampton Road airport area two. So let's go ahead and find those airports on the chart. That's definitely gonna be the first thing we need to do. Okay, so we're a little zoomed in, but as you can see, this is figure 20. And they said you're going from area five, the first flight airport, so five, area two and we're looking for the Hampton Airport so we'll be able to see that there. So I went ahead and have drawn a straight line that shows the course of flight. So that's the first step that we're going to want to do when determining our heading. So since we have this line we can go ahead and determine what its course is. So to use one of these chart plotters what we're going to do is we're going to line it up directly with our line and then we're going to slide it up and down until the center point here is lined up with one of these lines of latitude, latitude or longitude so we can figure out what our course is. So if we were to do that, you could see a spot right about here could be where we line the center up. Hover over that and see that right there. And if we're to look at this line of longitude right here and we zoom way in, we can see that, that it crosses at either a 140 or a 320-ish heading, which is going to tell us that this line is around a 320-ish heading. We know that we're going from south to north, so we're more than likely going to be this closer to a 320 heading. That checks out. That makes sense. So that's more than likely the right answer. But just be sure I have this other plotter, which is another technique you'll use. I'll probably use this one more. I like using this type of plotter more. But the, the idea is the same. You're going to line the center part up with where you have a uh, intersection between your course you're plotting and one of these lines of latitude or longitude. And we can see right here, we zoom way in, that it's going to be at about 320. Zooming way in, we can see that it's close to around 321. So let's go with 321. All right, so that's our course. Referring back to the question, they wanted us to determine our magnetic course. So what we have to do to convert our course to our magnetic course is add or subtract uh, the magnetic variation. And so when calculating for magnetic variation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for these dashed magenta lines. That's gonna be your isogonic line. Basically, that's gonna tell you, you know, what the magnetic variation is in this uh, spot. So in this case, the isogonic line that this falls nearest is 11 west. So whenever it's west, you add. Whenever it's east, you subtract. And if you happen to forget if you're gonna add or subtract, your magnetic variation. Typically you can look at your E6B and there's usually a tip on there. So we can see right here on your standard E6B, we're gonna have this equation here just to remind you as a tip. So it's telling you your true course, you're gonna subtract east or you're gonna add west and that's gonna give you your magnetic variation and then this is gonna equal your magnetic course. So as we saw earlier, our true heading was 321. When we take into account the isogonic line, we got our magnetic variation. So if we add 321 to 11, we'll get 332. And that's going to be answer C. 